and here are the beets that I processed. So there's what, three, six beets. When we buy a jar um, of uh, Nelly sliced beets, it's two dollars and sixty-eight cents. And usually that jar is in the refrigerator for three or four months, not the freshest. And my husband eats about three little slices of beets just to add something extra to a salad. Plus they're healthy. Um, in the day when I could eat them, I would sit down and eat a whole jar of pickled beets or sit down and eat this many beets in one sitting. But something's changed over the years, and now at 60 I'm not able to eat beets, but still want him to be able to eat all the different things that are healthy, even if I can. So this amount of beets, so one jar of Nellie's, we probably buy three or four jars a year, so we'll just look at it as what 540 540 1080 spent on beets and this will probably last him an entire year for salads just as a couple of slices in a salad and this bowl of beets costs two dollars so just you know with every little tiny thing like this if you have the time and if you have the money and if you have the opportunity um, when you buy something like this, you save money someplace else. We won't buy any more of those jarred beets as long as we've got these. These will freeze well. They'll last in the freezer for nine months to a year. Um, when he runs out, he runs out. Then by that time, it'll be beet season again, or we can buy a jar of uh, Nelly sliced beets. It's the same thing that I did with bread and that. We used to go through, you know, four loaves of bread a month. Yeah, so $2 isn't any big deal, but I have the flour here, I have the yeast, I have the salt, I have the water, and I can make a loaf of bread in a short time and save that $2. I buy the flour anyways for homemade cookies or homemade baked goods at Christmas time. I can spare some to make, you know, five or six loaves a year and save $2 at a crack. It's just little things like that. Instead of, you know, the freezer meals or the frozen meals or prepared meals and stuff like that, Homemade spaghetti and meat sauce is so cheap compared to buying like a box meal at, you know, 12 or 16 or $20. Now it's altogether different when you have kids or grandkids or other people in the house. Uh, your time may be more limited if you have a full-time plus job, both, you know, both working full-time plus, and there's no time to uh, cook, yeah, then it works. But when you're, you know, uh, my husband and I both work full-time, but I work from home, um, our budget tells us how much we can have in groceries because we need to put money towards other things and I just find all these little ways to save money and I have the time make the time whatever and it doesn't have to be large servings because there's just the two of us so doing it that way doing things that way thinking that way I uh, my friends and I were uh, sitting around the other day having coffee and kinda um, said you know it's kinda like senior life management I mean, it's getting used to doing things different, living a different way, managing your life different, having money that has to go to different uh, places than it did when you were in your 20s or 30s or 40s. And uh, managing going into my 60s and stuff like that, there are going to be some major changes, major changes in geography, may or may not be major changes in my health. Uh, maybe I'll have an altogether different eating way of uh, eating and foods that I can eat five years from now. There's no way to know. So we just take every day by day and try to manage life. And so, you know, right at this present time, I'm trying to uh, get used to managing life so that uh, in my 60s and that, it's not a great big, uh, you know, culture shock or, or lifestyle shock. And so this is just some of the ways that I've been doing for years that I'm going to take with me into my older age. And it's beneficial for myself, I think, and it's beneficial for my hubby, so... Uh, and fresh beets like this in a salad, you can't beat it. And when they're frozen in that, that works too. You can take them out, uh, thaw them in the refrigerator, and slice them nice and chilled on a salad. And sometimes he also prefers just to have them heated up in a saucepan, and we do that too. And like I said, they last nine months to a year. It's a win-win. It took me mm, 40 minutes to boil them on the stove and a couple minutes to stop at a farm stand and pay two bucks. So there's my little... Uh, every little bit counts for the month of August. Okay, this is this month's refrigerator tour. So, this is, it's the um, end of July, and we need to go from um, July 30th to August 12th, 
with what I'm going to show you. And it shouldn't be hard, but I at least want to going into the um, freezer challenge and getting things used up um, to make room for the summer produce that I'm going to be processing and stuff like that. Uh, we don't have a lot of space, so we have this refrigerator, we have a freezer, and we have a very small chest freezer. Um, so I'm not going to be processing a lot of produce this summer because we may be moving the early part of this next year. That's what we're hoping for. So it's not going to be like it usually is. Um, but at the same time, um, if you've been at, around my channel long enough, you know we don't buy in abundance. Um, I don't overstock, um, stock up, or buy an enormous amount of food. And I personally don't eat anything that's processed. So there isn't an enormous amount of frozen foods or processed or prepared foods that we have to store. But as we go through this tour, you will see what is taking up space and what we need to work through in the next two or three weeks in order to make room for the, the food that I'm going to be processing for winter eating and also obviously to get through the food that we have here before we have our next shot. So, uh, the French onion dip, thankfully, uh, I think that's been sitting in here two weeks now, my husband doesn't buy that often, maybe twice a year. Uh, normally doesn't go through it. I think this is probably going to be the last one we're going to buy because he's not interested in it either. He has cut down a considerable amount on snacking, which is a good thing because we're trying to get him to lose weight so that he can have surgery without issue. So we still see that sitting there. It shouldn't be there long. He's going to give it one more try and then it's got to be added to uh, baked potatoes or something and then go down the road. So, got a little of that. We have some of the country crack that we regularly use, some mayonnaise, some shredded cheese, cloths and pickles, applesauce for work, cheese sticks for snacking. We have the lunch meat and a block of white cheddar for grilled cheese sandwiches. I've got a couple of hot dogs here for tonight's supper meal little container of milk for when I make coleslaw or cucumber salad. We need a little bit of uh, my regular milk. My husband drinks uh, Fair Life milk. We've got a little of that left. A little bit of orange juice left. We've got four, five prepared yogurts and one container that we can still, or two containers that we can still break down into 14 more little containers. A little bit of um, cantaloupe left some cheese sticks for my husband's lunch. I've got 21 eggs left. And then a couple of my own yogurts, one of my special blueberry yogurts, and then two containers of the Great Value Original Vanilla uh, yogurt that I also break down into 14 little, I think they're even less than a half cup containers. In the crispers, I still have my potatoes, even though we're going to be harvesting potatoes off the deck soon. I've got a half a pound of carrots, and then in the other crisper, I have three beautiful grapefruit and some new potatoes. And the door, as always, just um, olive oil, which I do keep in there because it goes rancid otherwise. We've got some strawberry jam, some water, some baking sticks, butter, and then just a three cans of 7-Up and the waters that my husband takes to work. So that is what the refrigerator tour looks like. And here's the freezer. Now, the majority of this is frozen fruit. So I've got frozen fruit for bananas. I've got um, bananas for frozen fruit. Bananas from the store and also a bag of strawberry and banana frozen fruit. I've got some strawberries. There's at least two and a half pounds of frozen strawberries that I picked at a local farm to make uh, jam with later on this year. I did make jam just here, what, two weeks ago with some local strawberries. So, and that worked out great, tasted great. Uh, one of my last tours contained these three pizzas and by now I'm sure they're freezer burnt, but he will eat them. Yeah, I mean, it's not like they're gonna go out of date or anything, but I think they have been sitting here since the first of the year, again. We're trying to switch his diet so that he's eating healthy food and that he loses weight so that he's in good health and good condition to have surgery. I think this uh, cheesecake has been here since for Mother's Day. 
We did not eat it then, nor did we eat it at Father's Day, but hopefully we'll eat it soon. A couple of TV dinners, which he's always had around. Um, just to add in here, my husband and I eat a lot different from one another. Um, he's got some uh, issues where he can't tolerate, um, cannot tolerate milk, so he's lactose intolerant. I cannot tolerate gluten, so I try to avoid wheat. I also cannot tolerate preservatives or additives or flavoroids or <laughs> spices or anything like that. So a lot of my food is bland or just whole food, just regular food from farm stands. Uh, most of our meat is fish and chicken. So um, there are a lot of things like uh, I don't eat any red meat at all. So my husband, what red meat we do have, he eats but very slowly. And we mostly focus on, we buy very little of it and, and then eat it slowly, or he does. And then him and I together mostly eat chicken and fish. And we have about three nights a week where there's no meat. So we do have some home-baked cookies in here um, so that we can get away from anything store-bought. So home-baked cookies, can't really see those. I've got a loaf of home-baked bread. I still make my own bread. I've got a sweet roll from the grocery store. I've got some French toast that I uh, fixed for us, and then I froze the rest, so I got about four pieces of homemade French toast. We've got a uh, brioche bun for when he has hamburgers again, some leftover pizza. Uh, when we went to the uh, a local pizza shop, we brought home pizza, and then we broke it down and saved two future meals with it. A pie crust, I can't even remember when I bought that, but I'm going to make some uh, pie, apple pie soon, with some uh, apples that I have uh, coming from a neighbor. Uh, his tree is uh, loaded with apples, so we're going to get some apples from him, and I'm going to make some homemade apple pie and an apple crisp. So yeah, that's what the freezer's looking like. The door has frozen bananas, frozen strawberries and a leftover hamburger bun, and then we've got ice packs. So that's what the freezer looks like. If we didn't have a freezer this big, definitely there wouldn't be any sweet rolls. Definitely there wouldn't be any pizzas or cheesecakes or TV dinners. Uh, we did have a time in our life where we just had a very small refrigerator and a very small uh, freezer attached to it, obviously, and um, we were lucky if we could get four loaves of bread into that freezer. And we had that refrigerator freezer from the time we got married until almost 15 years later. So, um, yeah, our food budget didn't change from $100, or actually it was $150 a month from 1995 when we got married until about 2002. So I really uh, learned how to uh, make meals out of nothing get really lean and mean and uh, we grew a lot of vegetables and stuff like that we ate very little meat and I did a lot of home cooking which is where a lot of the way that we live now kind of came into the picture I just started finding things that we were eating and trying to make it homemade but yeah this this uh, kind of disappoints me a little bit I don't really like seeing sweet rolls um, I wish that I um, had the time right now to make more strawberry jam and obviously, I'm hoping soon to eliminate any TV dinners and that and replace those with actual homemade Swedish meatball casserole or something like that because I do know how to make that and, uh, and I would like to find the time to start making that homemade. And last but not least, we're getting down into that freezer. So yes, it's time again. I think now this is the end of July. I think we've defrosted this freezer twice, and the lower it gets in food, obviously, the faster it seems to build up with it. So I have processed um, two things this year. I've processed some green beans, our own green beans that we grew out front of our front door. We've had five harvests from that, and weighing them up in that, we have had just a little over two pounds of green beans. So we're pretty happy about that. And still getting some, but it won't be long before it's done. And then some snap peas. So those two things I processed, and today I did up some beets, which will replace the um, jarred beets that we buy at the grocery store, which have gone considerably up in price. So my husband will be able to eat these homegrown um, beets on his salads from this point until probably this point next year. 
So, taking those out and removing, I've got two loaves of bread that are in here. And then my husband and I each have a container of ice cream. We bought a pack of pizzas for quick eating. For uh, It, it kind of helps us with the pizza part, and I do eat uh, frozen pizzas. If we have these and know we can come home and pop one of these in the oven, it stops us from eating out at all. So we do a lot of like hiking and biking, and our shopping is done on the weekends, and sometimes we just can't schedule it to where we have to end up eating out. And to eat out, even at the, the most conservative meal we can come up with, which is Subway, still costs us uh, $20 for two sandwiches, a glass of water, and often my husband wants a cookie. So uh, if we want to go and actually have a fish dinner or something like that, um, the fish dinner at the VFW would run us well over $30 if we include a tip. Um, we don't uh, really eat at any other place anymore. We used to have several places that we would eat years ago, and then it dwindled down to just Subway and a local pizza. And the local pizza, uh, when we go and get that, which is usually two or three times a year, that runs us $26.00. And we both choose that on our birthdays, and we also choose that for our anniversary nowadays. But years ago, when we actually had money and uh, stuff, um, we would go out and have a 50 or $60 birthday or 50 or $60 anniversary meal. We don't do that anymore. And we used to go shopping every weekend and always have a meal uh, when we went shopping. And that used to add up to 80 or $100 a month. So we don't do that anymore either. So we bought three pizzas, and we got the three pizzas for $9. Name brand pizzas, Tombstone, so that was a great buy. We've got some hot dogs down there, some breakfast sausages, my husband's ice packs. We still have lemons. If you, It was in a video earlier this year. I just slice up lemons when they're on sale, and they drop down to 25 or $0.28 cents a piece, and I add it to water. Uh, we got just a couple of mozzarella sticks. They've been in there forever. Some more cheese shreds and as far as what type of other meat that we have in here we have um, six pounds of hamburger and two packages of chicken tenders and that is it so um, six pounds of hamburger two packages of chicken tenders enough breakfast sausages for three more breakfasts um, enough brats I don't know if I mentioned those before enough brats for three other meals and then uh, three pizzas we have a half a bag of french fries, three or four mozzarella sticks, two loaves of bread, and some cheese shreds in this freezer. Plus the green beans, the sugar snap peas, and soon the beets that will go in there. And that is all that's in this freezer. Pantry just has basically what I showed earlier in a video, but I am working on that to make another video. But mostly the pantry is just a couple of backup items and condiments and spices so that's all really that's in the pantry we don't really have any snack food anymore i cleared that shelf off we went through it and we haven't bought anything back uh, my husband still has uh, he likes to take a bag of peanuts to work and i think that he has some coffee and tea but uh, other than that that pantry has pretty much been made into um, spices backup of applesauce and peanut butter and just uh, you know ketchup mustard stuff like that so this is what we got for freezer food then I showed you the refrigerator and the freezer that's connected to that I have baking products like white sugar brown sugar flour we have spaghetti noodles and cream at elbow noodles and then I'll show you the little tiny pantry above our sink that just has um, uh, Oh, dry goods and stuff like that. So, here is all the rice that's left from the pandemic, and it's still in date um, for this year, and then it's done, so we need to get that done. So, a couple of boxes of oil in the bag, and a box of basmati rice, a uh, box of stuffing from last Thanksgiving uh, from Aldi, and then three boxes of rice and roni, and a box of Lipton soup that's probably been in there for a year. And then over here, under the weather or having a grilled cheese or something, I do make homemade tomato soup right now because tomatoes are in season. But when I didn't have tomatoes in season to do that, here is chicken with rice, three cans. And that is the extent of the food in our house that we're going to work through until the um, middle of 
August. I got some plants that I'm watering. So uh, that's that. I just thought I'd give kind of the look at what kind of food we have to work with. Two, three weeks that we're going to go um, trying to get through it. If you've been here in other videos or other tours, you know I'm just the type of person, as I said earlier, I don't, uh, you know, build up a big stock or overstock or, uh, you know, the end of the world isn't coming for me or for mine. I don't, I don't think so and I don't believe so. Uh, and it's for two reasons that I've just never done it. We have never had the money to sit here and buy all kinds of things and I would be absolutely nerve-wracked and also disappointed if I bought a bunch of stuff and I had to um, wonder, you know, what the date was and where is it and how much do I have and make myself work through uh, freezers and stuff trying to find things in date or out of date. Uh, and it would, you know, it would upset me personally if I had to throw away food, if I had to waste food because I had just bought too much and couldn't keep track of it. So for two personal reasons, out of necessity from basically always having to watch our money and not having a lavish uh, budget to stock up all kinds of food. And secondly, it just is much easier for me to manage the food that uh, I bring into the household on a monthly basis to get it, to get it, you know, brought in, paid for, um, brought in eaten, eaten in time, and nothing ever gets wasted here. Nothing ever gets thrown out. I never have to wonder, you know, what I have that I haven't paid attention to and used up. So it's all visible for me. It's visible when I open the freezers, and it's also written down so it's visible on paper. And it's just a system that works better for me. Other people do differently, and that's perfectly fine by me to each his own. So that finishes up the tour. I'm going to have a few clips added into this video, and then... As I said in my community post, this month, uh, the month of August, is going to be spent um, going, you know, creating a meal plan menu, creating a grocery list for when we do go shopping in August, working through the freezer, showing some cooking, showing some food processing for winter eating, uh, all around just trying to save some money, build up maybe a small fund of money uh, from savings, and, you know, with the fall and the Christmas season coming upon us, definitely a little extra money won't hurt and uh, getting things cleaned out and getting fresh things in the pantry and in the cupboards and in the freezer is a good thing so if you like these types of videos I hope you'll hit the subscribe button if you like this video please hit the like button it helps my channel gets the word out there it gets uh, YouTube's algorithm happy uh, I enjoy uh, the community I definitely enjoy everybody that stops by and watches uh, my videos and leaves comments I love the interaction in the community I hope you're all well and I'll see you again here next week okay it is Friday afternoon I think it's we'll say it's July maybe 24th or 25th and we took a ride out to go to some local farm stands so first we picked up six ears of corn for four dollars and I know a lot of people think that that's uh, pretty expensive but that's fairly typical for this area and for this farm stand and it's delicious corn and it's the corn we're sticking with for the season so six ears four dollars and we uh, went to another farm stand uh, this one that we uh, that's close to home and that doesn't have a lot of really quality looking stuff right now I'm not really sure what's going on but we usually only buy melons from that stand and sweet corn so then we go to another one that's fairly close and I picked up cucumbers so each one of these cucumbers was 75 cents we did go over to Walmart and I included that in this little haul it's not from a farm stand but I thought these uh, grapefruit look absolutely positively fabulous a dollar thirty eight per grapefruit and they're huge so, continuing off the farm stand, uh, tomatoes, they were $1.39 a pound. Uh, peaches, $1.69 a pound. The zucchini is three for $2, so we got two summer squash and one zucchini. The uh, beans were from the first farm stand that we stopped at. We just tried them. They, they look pretty sad, but we got about a quarter of a pound, maybe a little over, and we paid... Um, it was $2.99 a pound for these at the first stand, and then when we went to the second stand, we got some better quality ones, because my husband loves green beans, and we're also growing our own green beans. And those were $1.69 a pound, so we got more of those. And then at the first stand, like I said, we usually only stop there for melons and corn. We did get a melon that is ripe. I think it's going to be good after we've maybe bought 
a couple from another stand, one from Walmart, a watermelon from Walmart, and they all were awful. We hope this one's going to be good. It costs $4.25, which is generally what we pay for them. And then at the second stand, which is the one that we go to the most uh, year-round, um, except for three months in the winter, he has flower bouquets. So the bouquet contained five of these sunflowers, two zinnias, a dahlia and then a bunch of snapdragons and he has these bouquets set up and each one of them are six dollars so that's pretty good for all the flowers that you get in one bouquet and they're all of my favorite flowers so that's what we got at two different farm stands in Wisconsin this afternoon